in this video, we're going to look at how we can find mu and sigma when they're unknown in a normal distribution. So, if we have some sacks of potatoes, we know the mean weight is 5 kilograms, and they're packed by an automatic machine. A test found that 10% of the bags were over 5.2 kilograms. We need to use this information to find the standard deviation of the process. So first of all, we're going to write the random variable and a distribution. So our random variable in this case is simply m, is the mass of the sack of potatoes. And m is distributed normally with mean 5 and variance sigma squared, because that's what we don't know. Now remember that in the normal distribution sort of notation there, we write sigma squared for variance, but we will be finding sigma, the standard deviation. Now, what we need to find, or what we know, should I say, is that the probability of m, the mass of a stack of potatoes, being bigger than 5.2 is 10%, which is 0.1. Now, let's think about this in a graph. On the graph, of our normal distribution here. We have our bell-shaped curve with the mean going through 5 here and a standard deviation that we don't know. But what we do know is that at 5.2 the area above that is equal to 0.1. What we can map this to now though is the standard normal distribution. And remember the standard normal distribution is denoted by Z. And we can transform or standardize any normal distribution into the standard one by doing X minus mu all divided by sigma. So we replace 5.2 by 5.2 minus 5 which is mu over sigma. When we simplify that, we get 0.2 over sigma. Now, we want to turn that around so it's a less than or equal to uh, value inside the bracket. And we get, by twisting it around, that means that the area here, the probability of this bit, the area here, is 0.9. If this blue bit is 0.1, then the white bit under the curve is 0.9, and that's the probability that it's less than that given value. Now, how do we work this out? Well, this is an inverse, so we go into our calculator. We're in menu, we go to stats in 2, and then we go to distribution, normal, and inverse normal, F3. We make sure we're set to variable, and we're looking at, at, with this one here, we're given a left-hand ta left tail. So we're looking for left. The area, we know is 0 0.9 in this case, 0 0.9. And we standardized it, we're dealing with Z now, so sigma is 1 and mu is 0. We hit enter, and we get 1.28155. That means that this value here, 0.2 over sigma is equal to 1.28155. We could have gone to that on this step here as well using our calculator because we can actually set it to being a right tail and that would be this bit here but then we'd have to make sure we set the area to 0.1 and we get the same value. Once we have that value, it's simply a matter of rearranging and doing sigma is equal to 0.2 divided by, let's go here, sigma is equal to 0.2 over 1.28155, which gives us our sigma of 0 0.156 to three significant figures. Now let's look at a second example, and this one's a bit more complicated. A manufacturer does not know the mean and standard deviation of the diameters of some ball bearings. 
However, a sieving system rejects all ball bearings larger than 2.4 cm and those under 1.8 cm in diameter. 8% of the ball bearings are rejected as being too small and 5.5% as being too big. Now we need to find the mean and standard deviation. And we're going to find a, uh, follow a very similar process here. First of all, we're going to define D to be the diameter of the ball bearings and D is distributed normally with mean mu and variance sigma squared, neither of which we know. Now let's write down what we know. Thinking about our graph, we know that the probability that D is bigger than 2.4 is 0 0.055. 5.5% .5 is 0 0.055. That means we know that this area up here is 0 0.055, where we're dealing with 2.4 here. We also know that the probability that D is less than 1.8, this bit here, is 8%, which is 0 0.08. So we know that the area below that bit is 0 0.08. Now we need to do the same process we did last time, which is to standardize each of these. For the top one, we get 2.4 minus mu over sigma, which we can rearrange as being less than and 0.945. We can then go back to the stats page and do a distribution, normal, and an inverse of 0.945. So we want a left here, because this is below this value now. And the area is 0.945. And sigma is 1 and mu is 0 because we're dealing with z. And when we hit enter, we get a value of 1.59819314. So we know that this value here is equal to that. Now we're going to do the same on the bottom. We get if d is less than 1.8, then z on the standardized one is less than 1.8 minus mu all over sigma. And then we're going to do the same thing. We can do a left one. We know it's 0 0.08 in this case, our area. And this time we get it's minus 1.4050716. Now we've got these two. We've actually got two simultaneous equations in mu and sigma that we can solve. My recommendation would be first of all to multiply by sigma and then solve that from there. We can also do that on our calculator using the equation part by going to simultaneous, which is F1. We have two sets of data. But it has to be in this form, so be a little bit careful what we type in here. Um, we're going to say x is uh, we can say x is mu and y is sigma. So a little bit of rearranging and solving that um, equation simultaneously using your uh, calculator or algebraically, and you get to the answers of mu is 2.08 and sigma is 0.200. So that's how we use standardizing to solve normal problems where we need to find mu or sigma or possibly both.